Hi everyone, just a quick update before I get into this video. I've recently started teaching on Skillshare and have put together a beginner's pen and wash class just in time for October slash Inktober. Go ahead and check it out, the details are in the description below. Okay, so here's another interesting one from my sketchbook. I had some good fun painting it and some of you might recognize the background here. Let me know if you do. And what I'm going to do is just walk you through my process. A lot of the techniques here you're going to be able to use on almost any streetscape that you do. And I would say my biggest tip when you're painting streetscapes or even general landscapes, you need to make everything further back a lot lighter. And the reason why I say that is when you do make things further back lighter or less detailed, it pushes them back and just gives your painting a little bit more depth. So anything that's closer to the viewer in the foreground, make it a bit more detailed and darker. That's a general rule that I tend to follow. Now with the yellow suits of these guides, it's really important, especially when you have lighter figures like this, to just get that pure pigment onto the paper straight away. Don't let it mix with anything else. And, you know, if it does mix in with the background a little bit, that's fine. But you don't want it to have streaks and just for it to blend completely into the background. There's got to be some kind of separation and the degree of separation just varies depending on your style. Okay, that first wash is completely dry now. Use my favorite purple hairdryer and just adding in now these buildings. And like I was saying before, just trying to make them a lot darker near the front and using the advantage of just cutting around these figures as well. And that's going to help them pop out and bring them more to the front. So I don't want the paintings to be a huge feature, but I do want it to read as a city type scene. And notice how I'm going quite light at the back and I'm using complementaries as well. So, you know, warmer and cooler tones together. Same with this little booth at the front there. And somehow I started out painting an ice cream booth, as you can see with the little ice cream symbol there, but somehow it just turned into this. Don't ask me how. And now what I'm doing is adding some shadows. So I've decided the shadows will come from the left to right and light source from the left. And just indicating that darkness on the ground being cast by some of these buildings. It's all quite abstract with the buildings, but you can generally tell and just adding a bit of detail onto these suits now. A bit of darkness here and there and indicating the boots as well. I'm also trying to get in a lot of these shadows underneath the figures too. There's a couple of them sitting in the booth that I've done. That's actually my favorite part of the painting. And a lot of the time when I'm doing paintings, I feel that I'm constantly Reevaluating and trying to just balance out different elements in the painting. Is it too detailed on this side? Does this figure need less detail? Do I need to add in more shadows on this side? So I think it's really important to always take a step back and stop for a second, have a look, and then continue on. Some of these lines I'm now adding on to the buildings, very subtle, but they really aid with the perspective as well and it's just a very thin layer of paint that I've used but it's darker than the initial wash so at this point of the painting I wasn't feeling too good about the left hand side especially and I almost abandoned it but thought I'll just continue anyway uh, I stopped and went back to it the next day and just continued on and now I'm just adding little bits of detail and darkness onto some of the background buildings I just want to give it a bit more variation and try to blend some of those buildings into the sky just on some edges as well I think it's really important to always finish a painting when you start it and the reason why is you always learn something from every painting, even if it doesn't turn out the way you want it to turn out or if you think it's just not worked out at all. 
you always look back and you think, okay, you know, at least I finished it, and then next time you can try something different. So I always try to push through and just see what comes out of it. I think that's really important with watercolors as well because a lot of the time when you start putting on the first washes in watercolors, it doesn't look like much and you feel that there's just not much depth. But you have to remember with, with this medium that a lot of the detail and the interesting effects come with all the layering. And so I just, yeah, just something I wanted to mention. Just adding more detail to the suits of these funny looking fellas now. The paper that I'm using is not 100% cotton and because of that it's quite interesting because I can lift out some paint as well. It's not the best paper but that's one of its advantages. You can go back and correct certain areas. It's kind of similar to that Canson paper that I used to use, uh, Canson Montfort I think it is. I've added in some drones very quickly in, in the sky there, just in one colour. And what I'm doing here, I'm just using the brush to wet some areas of the buildings, especially the harder edges that touch the sky and adding in a bit of white gouache. And that's just softened some of those edges. And I thought it's now balanced it out a bit because before it was looking just too, too hard on some parts of the painting. And this area on the left, it's looking a bit too dark. So, I'm now trying to go in with some gouache and add in some highlights. And at this point, I'm thinking to myself, I really don't want to continue. I'm done with this painting. But I did put it down for a bit, went back to it. And I had this light bulb moment here where I realized I can actually lift out some paint to the left and just create a bit of this light effect coming from the sky. So that's what I'm doing now, lifting out some paint. You can do this with all kinds of watercolour paper, but I do find with the 100% cotton paper, it's a lot harder, especially if you've got staining pigments. It's just very difficult to lift out. But yeah, like I said before, when you've got this sort of non-cotton paper, you can make a lot of corrections as well throughout the process. And I'm doing that now to just lift out some highlights on these figures because that white gouache, it just stands out too much and it looks unbalanced in the whole painting. So a little bit is fine, but I was really using too much of it before. So here we are, the finished painting. Let me know what you think and comment below. If you're enjoying my videos and learning a few things from it, I'd appreciate if you subscribed to my channel. I do videos every week and have also started a Skillshare page, which I'll link in the description below. Thanks for watching.